Math 43 had a question coming out of chapter one, number 76. And you can see there's a lot of words in here, right? This is one of those essay questions. And I get that you could pause the video and just copy down what I have, but I would really encourage you to try and, and well, listen to the video, right? But don't copy down what I have. Try and, when you're done with this video, write up your own essay response. It shouldn't look exactly like mine because it should be your voice, right? Your words. And you want to practice that because I, I get that writing up essay responses might be something you feel uncomfortable with, but in order to, to deal with that uncomfortability, right, you've got to practice it. So practice writing up your own response. All right. And it, again, it should not look like mine because it should be your wording, your understanding of the material. All right. So this, this question is talking to us about um, when you do magazine polls. And magazine polls, just in general, they're, they might be fun. I'm not denying that. Right, but they are bad stats, right? You're going to get a bias here. And that's what happened back in Literary Digest back in 1936. Now, think about 1936, right? We're in the middle of the Great Depression. And in that presidential race, there was somebody named Alf Landon. And he was going up against this other guy that we know now named FDR. And FDR was the Democratic candidate and Alf Landon was the Republican candidate. And I'm going to tell you, FDR cleaned up in that election. Like, it was a blowout. His um, electoral college was huge, and he won the popular vote by, I think, 20% or something like that. He blew Alf Landon out of the water, but this Literary Digest magazine predicted it the other way, right? And this magazine sent out postcards to their subscribers, and they got, actually, I think they got quite a few returned all right, but the the twenty or the two point three million that got returned, I know that number is referenced down here. The two point three million that got returned said, "Hey, I think Alf Landon's going to be our guy," All right? And they were incorrect. Alf Landon didn't win. Like I said, he he lost by a lot. Now, why might that have happened? Why are these magazine polls potentially such a bad idea? Well, here's where if you read this, I start to make some some leaps of faith. I even mention it here, right? I'm taking a giant leap of faith, but I, and this gives you some of my bias, I think the wealthier tend to be Republican, all right? So maybe when this magazine survey went out, right, it had a selection bias in that it severely underrepresented Democrats, or another way of saying that is it overrepresented, oops, overrepresented Republicans. And so if you were getting more Republican responses, all right, you might think, hey, Landon's going to be it. And the reason I thought that the wealth led to it is because I was thinking about, hey, in 1936, if we're going through the depression, right, and people are struggling with money, if if folks have some money, right, and that means, or excuse me, if folks are subscribing to magazines, they must have some money that they have, right? Because if, if you're struggling with money, you're not going to subscribe to a magazine. Um, so that, that's where I was making making that connection. So that would be my answer for part A. And then in terms of the low response rate, they're saying, well, hey, oops, excuse me, that was the eraser, that we only got 2.3 million out of the 10 million here that um, we sent out. I, I actually think that response rate is huge, right? I think that's a lot. I think if you're serving 2.3 million folks, that's a huge sample from your um, population. But again, you are only sampling from the magazine subscribers. So it's not that the that this uh, this number seems low to me. It's the non-sampling error that's my main concern. And it goes back to what I said in A. It's the fact that I think you left out from the sample certain parts of your population. I think you overrepresented Republicans and underrepresented Democrats. And again, that's what I start to go through in part C, right? This is a non-sampling error. All right, we didn't sample voters who do not subscribe to the magazine. And they might feel differently about who they're going to vote for um, if they don't subscribe to the magazine. We just don't know, right? And I, again, I would argue um, they, they do feel differently because this poll was so far off. Um, and when you hear sampling error, that just means when you take a sample and you get a statistic from it, we're well aware that that sample, excuse me, that statistic might not necessarily be the exact same number as the parameter, right? Because the only way to, to actually get a parameter is to run a census. So a sampling error is just saying, hey, let's say um, that, and, and this is me making stuff up right now. So let's say that the poll came back and it said that, hey, 52% um, of folks are going to vote for FDR, but maybe the true proportion was really 53%. That little gap between our statistic 
and our parameter, that would be something we call a sampling error. All right, and then non-sampling error means that we, we, um, we actually left out part of our population, right? It's a bigger, bigger issue there. All right, and then when you hear about quota sampling, quota sampling, when you're taking your population and breaking it up into groups and you're taking some from each group, that's stratifying. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.